What's up everybody, how's it going? It's Beck, AK Dan's Great here, and welcome to this little video that I wanted to make before getting into the Elden Ring DLC, which I am incredibly excited about. Since my original Elden Ring journey began almost two and a half years ago, I wanted to kind of sit down a little bit and reflect on the adventure so far before moving into the DLC, which has incredible reviews. And what I wanted to do was basically have a look at the bosses that ended up causing me the most trouble in my own playthrough. So here is a ranking of the 10 bosses in my first playthrough of Elden Ring that I died the most to. So I'm gonna have a look back at them. I'm gonna tell you how many times I died to them, a little bit of reaction and context to them having come back to it all this time later. And hopefully that should set things up nicely for when the journey will continue very soon on the channel. So I want to begin with a tie for 10th place that features four different bosses that all had 17 deaths each. These four bosses are Radigan slash Elden Beast, which I'm gonna kind of group together as one because there's no breaks between the bosses, kind of back to back. This is of course the final kind of storyline boss of the game. I loved Radigan as a boss fight. I did not like Elden Beast. This should be a lot higher because especially my first attempt, obviously I really struggled against Elden Beast. Uh, the lion's share of those deaths were against Radigan but the battle just takes so long to even get past Radigan and then to fight Elden Beast. I wasn't that huge a fan of that particular fight, and so I think after maybe six or seven attempts, I decided to use my Mimic tier because I'd been playing for almost 150 hours, and I wanted to just complete the game, see the credits roll, and so that's why it wasn't higher, because for me at least, that two boss battle combination was really horrific for a first timer, and I just could not get through without needing a Mimic tier in the end for my first attempt. Next up is Godfrey slash Horalu. Again, I grouped these two together. This was one of my favorite fights of the game. It was a ton of fun towards the end. And it was a real, like, especially the, the Horalu form, it was a real bloodbath and just like a really epic scene transition from Godfrey to Horalu. I definitely remember the fight very well. And I had a really good time with it. It was that really nice level of difficulty, like 17 deaths is really good. And that's where I kind of felt the challenge, but also managed to overcome it before I got like super frustrated and I had a really good time with that one. Then there's Renala with 17 deaths as well. Uh, Renala was a very interesting one because at this stage I was really getting immersed deeply into the game, like really enjoying myself as I made it to Rhea Lucaria. Uh, Rhea Lucaria itself was an area I really enjoyed. It was kind of like a Hogwarts kind of vibe for me. And after the big open world expansiveness, to go into somewhere that's more of like a, you know, a castle kind of school type area, I thought was really, really cool. And so I was starting to make decent progress, but then Renala kind of halted me in my tracks because I just did not understand how to deal with her magic in the second form, like the main form of that fight. The magic was so powerful and it just kept one-shotting me constantly. And because I had much more of a passive, kind of rolling away, jumping away, trying to avoid everything kind of play style where I kept distance, that didn't work too well against Renala. And so I died a lot against her until I got a little bit more powerful, a little bit more aggressive and I figured it out. But I always have respect for the Renala fight because it was very different to a lot of the other major fights in the game because of the heavy magic use. The final one is actually Morgoth who also has 17 deaths. Now Morgoth originally I was not like the biggest fan of because basically it's kind of a, a souped up version of a boss you've already fought before kind of thing. Obviously some different movesets and stuff too for sure but the fact that it's a boss we already met uh, who caused me a lot of problems. You're going to hear this boss's name a little bit later on, but I wasn't like the hugest fan of it. Uh, 17 deaths though, that was again in that nice sweet spot where I did struggle in the fight uh, relatively early on, but I managed to kind of get into it and find my way through. And having played the game for, for quite a long time at that point, probably about 95 hours or so, I was definitely uh, I was definitely better than I was against his predecessor. And so eventually I managed to get through. And so that is the list of the four boss battles all tied in 10th place for the most deaths in my Elden Ring playthrough. Number nine, we have Estelle, Stars of Darkness. God, I love the Estelle boss design. It really is so cool. Uh, first thing about Estelle is I wish there was only one Estelle. There's two of them. And this is the second one. And the reason there's so many deaths, anyone who watches the playthrough will remember well. It's one of the biggest memes of the whole playthrough is that this guy has a really horrific like grab attack in which it kind of multiplies out and it seems to fill almost the entire arena and it homes in on you and it does this really wide area grab attack and it one shots you and i absolutely hated that move and i just could not figure it out thankfully it was only 18 deaths 
uh, somehow I kind of basically I think one of the first times I ever somehow dodged that move I managed to get the win but until there I was just really really stuck and I hated that part of the fight but the boss design and the first like half of the Estelle fight I was always a big fan of so Estelle Stars of Darkness is in ninth place now another of the meme fights, we have Erdtree Burial Watchdog times 2. These guys killed me a total of 19 times. This was, I guess, maybe a little earlier in the playthrough where I was kind of much more in a I'm going to bash my head against the wall until I win kind of thing. These two enemies, for the level that I was at, they were relatively tanky. They had a lot of range, like their swords and their staff has decent range. They have lots of shock wavy kind of attacks that also have range and you are stuck in a relatively small arena with these two constantly pounding you. And I just could not find a way through for quite a long time. It really frustrated me. And eventually I had to kind of give up on that one and come back a bit later when I was a bit stronger. And even then they still killed me a few times. Just one of the most frustrating boss battles I had in the playthrough. So those guys are in eighth place. Next up is a death right bird with 19 deaths and this was one of my favorite bosses of the game because in my playthrough I think there's four death right birds either three or four I only met one of them so I played for 150 hours I did almost everything I thought I could do and I only met one death right bird and this was a very high level one hence the the death count and at the time I thought this was a unique boss and there's none other like this in the game and so I really enjoyed it, like the flame was really cool, uh, the setting, like the design, I'd never seen it in the game until that point. And just like a really good, tough boss battle. And it felt really nice to be able to beat the Death Right Bird. So it ranks quite highly uh, on this list. And for me, it ranked a disproportionately high, I think, because I only met it once. The Death Right Bird in Mountaintops of the Giants was my seventh place for the most deaths in Elden Ring. Next up, we have a fan favorite, which is Malaketh. This one, again, I grouped together with uh, the Beast Clergyman slash Malaketh, because they're all part of the same overall kind of boss sequence. This one had 21 deaths, which for me, based on some of the other conversations I had, was actually pretty decent. Uh, this was the stage of the game where I was definitely like, I'm not summoning, I'm not using Mimic Tears, I'm going to really like grind this out, I'm going to get better. And Malaketh was definitely a struggle. Like the Beast Clergyman form, I didn't find that tough. But Malaketh, of course, was very difficult. And some of those attacks, to this day, I just don't understand how to dodge them. And in my winning attempt, I got a little bit lucky, I think, with some of the moves that it chose. And just, in general, a very tough boss fight. For me, at least, it felt like the biggest reprieve was that Malaketh had relatively lower HP, considering how late in the game that you fight it. But I am very relieved about that. Otherwise, it could have had, like, double or triple the death count before I was able to defeat it. But just the design, just really, really cool and uh, definitely enjoyed my time fighting against Malaketh, but I know he's, uh, he is definitely not the favorite of some people who have played through the game. In fifth place, this one might surprise you guys if you haven't seen the playthrough. It is the Crucible Night Fight, specifically the one you meet in the jail in Limgrave. The reason this one is here is because it's so early in the game. I would say this is a relatively high level boss for considering that it's in Limgrave, it kind of feels a bit overscaled for that area. And me being relatively fresh into the game, and generally not that experienced a Soulsborne player anyway, uh, I'd only played Bloodborne up until this point, I had a very tough time against Crucible Knight. Um, I had like a, a flurry of deaths, and then I came back again later on to complete the job. But I will say that in general, Crucible Knights tend to be one of my favorite enemies of the game because they're just so pure. Like the first forms that they have is just very pure, big guy in very tough armor, just swinging his sword, and you have to kind of practice understanding how those swings work and try to get better against it. I mean, I did much better against the Crucible Knights I faced later in the game, uh, mostly because I discovered a weapon that worked very well against them, which was the, the Ice Rind Hatchet with the Horfrost Stomp. That definitely helped, uh, especially for first-time kind of newbies. Uh, any tool that helps you get through these bosses is definitely a godsend. But the first one I ever met gave me a lot of trouble, and that's why it's so high up on the list with 23 deaths. And now, in fourth place, it's the man himself. It is General Radan with a big 41 deaths. By this stage of the game, I think I was maybe about 40 to 50 hours in, something like that. And I was starting to feel more confident. I'd already made it through a lot of Kaled, which is a, a really rough area anyway. And I was starting to, you know, think, okay, I'm getting better at the game. Uh, Radan, at this stage, I'd already heard generally, like through the internet, Radan is this really infamous boss. And this was like the version 1.02. 
Radon was such a tough enemy that it ended up getting some patches to make it a little bit easier later on. I don't know if they reversed those, so like if you play it today, he's still like the same difficulty as the one I faced. But I definitely faced like a, a tougher version of him. And the main reason this death count is so high is because I tried to fight him one on one. I was like, let me solo him. And even though I didn't overestimate my abilities, I kind of overestimated my patience a little bit. And eventually, after about 35, 37 attempts or so at this, I ran out of patience and I was like, you know what? This boss is designed to be fought using the, the summons that you can call on. It's supposed to be like a festival of war. We're supposed to call these guys. And this guy is so powerful that you're supposed to take him on with this like army of challengers and try to beat him that way. And so eventually I had to bite the bullet. I had to swallow my pride and use the summons in order to defeat him. But that was after a lot of deaths first. So Radon was definitely a memorably difficult enemy for me and caused 41 deaths in the playthrough. As we enter the top three, we have some heavy hitters. The first of which is Margit in third place. The legendary Margit. I had 46 deaths against him. And the phrase, put these foolish ambitions to rest, will never leave my mind after that boss battle. I personally think he's genius. I really do think it's one of the smartest boss battle p placements and designs I think I've seen for this type of game. Because in my opinion, he really tries to tell you how the game should be played. The first time I met him, I think I was level 13 or something. And I just made a beeline, just like following the grace and trying to get ahead as quickly as possible. And I ran into an absolute wall. Uh, for a first time player who's a completely like average skill, maybe below average skill, you're probably not going to beat Margit at level 13 unless like you put in absolutely hours and hours of practice into fighting him. That depends on your playstyle. But I think what that boss is really trying to say is, look man, we've created like this whole world for you. You've barely explored any of Limgrave. You've got the Weeping Peninsula to the south, which is scaled favorably as well. Get out there, have some fun, explore some stuff, do some catacombs, do some other things, uh, get stronger. Get better at the game and then face market. Don't try too hard to kind of just bash your head through this game. And I had to learn that the hard way because obviously I'm so wired to think that Soulsborne games are tough and the whole process is to just fight, 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 get better, die hundreds and hundreds of times and that's how you eventually get good at the game. This is still definitely true, but I think there's times when you should do that and maybe times when you shouldn't. And this was a stage where I made the wrong choice. And with Margit, I spent too much time just fighting him over and over again, instead of just getting out there and enjoying the game. And so eventually, I had to fight him on three separate occasions. And that's why the, the death count is that high as well. So thankfully, there were two separate occasions where I think I fought him maybe 15, 20 times or something. And I was like, you know what, this is not working. I need to get out there and I need to get stronger and I need to get better. And both times they were the right call. And so eventually I think I was like level 28 or 30 or something along those lines when I came back and won. And that felt a lot more right to me. And so that's how it worked for my playthrough. But that's why the death count was so high because I came into it very early and I was very stubborn about trying these fights over and over again. And so now we move ahead to second place and this may surprise some people, but second place is actually Melania with 58 deaths. So for Margit, I was talking about the whole idea of me feeling like Elden Ring is all about just fighting bosses over and over again until you get good. And I also said that there's a time I feel when you should do that and times when maybe it's not the best idea when you're playing Elden Ring. And Melania was at the stage where there was almost nothing left to fight in the game. My level was about as high as it was going to go. I was getting close to like the, the soft cap for the stats, so I wasn't getting that much more for my leveling up. I had basically the armors I wanted, the weapons I wanted, and it was like, you know what? It's been months since I started playing this game. Melania is already very famous for being one of the toughest like Soulsborne bosses of all time. Let's get it. Let's fight Melania. I don't care if it takes 200 attempts. I'm taking Melania down. We're going to do this. And yeah, so the fight began. And obviously I was like, okay, this boss is incredibly tough. Then I got frustrated when I figured out that even if you're using a shield to try to block some of the attacks, even if you block an attack with a shield, she still regains HP. And then that was like, well, what's the point of even using a shield? I'll just try to get better at dodging. And it was this whole kind of odyssey of me just kind of attempting it again and again and again. And the two forms that she has, when you put them together, and the fact that she can steal HP away from you, if you're not that great a player, the amount of HP she steals back from you as well 
makes it a very large health pool and the fight takes a long time. And so even though I took more time on Melania than my first placed uh, enemy, Melania had less deaths because I was taking quite a long time to kind of go through each attempt. And so yeah, eventually with Melania, the story was in the first playthrough that I simply wasn't good enough. I tried, I think maybe like four hours, something like that, just non-stop, just fight, 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 fight. Did not work. I got to the second form a whole bunch of times and maybe got to within like 20%, 30% of the, of the final kind of health bar, but it wasn't happening. And by this stage again, I was getting really fatigued. Uh, I played maybe 140 hours or so again. And so I was like, you know what? Um, I think it's time to, to give up on this one. Let's call our old friend the Mimic Tier. And the two of us together melted through Melania. But if I hadn't done so many of the other stuff and spent so much time exploring, I think I would have had more energy to fight Melania for like two or three sessions and then maybe rack up like 100 attempts, 150 attempts, and then maybe I would have beaten her without summoning. But for the first playthrough, I think at this stage, I really was starting to feel the burnout a little bit. And so I wanted to put an end to things by beating Melania as soon as I could. And so after 58 deaths, I took out Melania. Now, a quick note, I did later return to fight Melania without summons. And I managed to do this on two separate occasions. So I got my revenge on Melania. And uh, that content is also on the channel if you ever want to see it. But that for me was just like a, a good example of a fight where, for me at least, it really was worth giving it everything and just trying as many times as I could before kind of starting to fall back on tactics that I knew would give me a very big advantage in a extremely difficult boss fight. And so with that, let's move on to the first ranked enemy in terms of deaths. Now, this is really fitting because this is the enemy you need to defeat to get into the DLC. And that enemy is Moog, Lord of Blood. Now, Moog gave me a horrific time and I had 65 deaths against Moog alone. This one was horrible because it was really like, Moog is a very tough boss anyway, but I made him much more difficult for myself by not using the tactics that have been working so well for me for so much of the late game. So at this stage, I was using the Blasphemy Blade a lot. And I know that's a blasphemous thing to say in the community. It's got this horrible reputation of being this really cheesy, really OP kind of weapon. But regardless of that whole debate, I was doing a blind run and that's the weapon that I found was really useful. And it definitely is. But it has a fire element. And I figured since Moog has kind of a, a fire blood kind of attacking style, a fire weapon probably wasn't going to do that great against him, so I couldn't use my weapon of choice. The second thing I relied on quite a lot in my playthrough was doing bleed damage, and I made the apparently incorrect assumption that bleed also probably doesn't work against someone that calls himself the Lord of Blood. So two of my kind of big weapons were taken away. One I was right to not really use as much, but the second later on I realized that that was a mistake. He most definitely can bleed, and it's still a very good tactic to use against him but I racked up a lot of attempts where I wasn't really using the setup that I quite wanted to use. So that was one reason why uh, Moog had so many deaths. The second reason was because even though he's not as difficult as Melania, I reached him before I got to Melania. And this was the stage where I was really kind of deep into it. I was getting very close to the end of the game and I knew that Moog was one of the hardest optional bosses to go and I was quite energized. And so that's why I was able to rack through a lot of attempts against Moog. And I didn't burn out against him the same way I burned out against Melania. Because Melania's first form, even once I started to get better, was taking me so long that repeat attempts were taking quite a while. But with Moog, I could kind of get through the attempts a little bit more quickly. And that's why even though Melania is the more difficult fight, Moog ended up giving me more deaths in my playthrough. He was one of three bosses that made me give up my kind of no summons thing that I tried to do for most of like the final 30 to 40% of the playthrough. So Moog eventually, again, same problem, I died 65 times and I was like, I've had enough of this guy, I want to summon, and so I summoned Mimic Tier. Same thing happened with Melania and then Elden Beast right at the end, I was just, I, I ran out of energy and I just wanted to see the credits roll and uh, put an end to a 150 hour immense, incredibly good playthrough. And so those three bosses were the ones where I had to kind of give up in the end and use the Mimic Tier. So that is the story so far, my friends. We are going back to the world of Elden Ring very soon, and we will begin the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC right where I ended this video, in the arena where we fought and defeated Moog. So I look forward to seeing you guys there, whether you're just going to be watching my playthrough or playing along as well and seeing how I fare in the DLC. 
I hope you all enjoy it, I hope you all support the series, and I look forward to bringing Elden Ring content regularly once again to this channel, because it truly has been one of my favorite games of the last 10 years. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon. Take care.